Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. Today's video, we're gonna be testing out some perfumes. So some of these are newer releases, some of these are super popular, hyped up, and I was super curious to find out whether or not I wanted to add these into my collection. So I'm gonna tell you my thoughts and my opinions on these perfumes. I'm gonna let you know whether I think they're worth my hard earned money and whether I plan to bring them into my collection or not. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I really appreciate you being here. To my returning subscribers, thank you guys so, so much. I truly appreciate you guys. If you are not subscribed to my channel, I would ask that you would please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out, it helps my channel out. If you are subscribed and if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, that helps a lot too. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. All right, first up is a house that I've been hearing a lot of buzz about on YouTube. It's by, I think it's Greedy, is it? Yeah, greedy. Gre gritty? <laughs> it's not greedy as in like I'm greedy, but I'll put it up on the screen. The one that stood out to me the most is called Tutu. And I thought that this was a shoe in I thought I was absolutely gonna love this fragrance. It has coconut, it has apple, grapefruit. It's got heliotrope, rose, jasmine. There's raspberry, musk, vanilla. I thought I was gonna love it, absolutely. And honestly, it's not my favorite. It's not bad, it's not bad. It's just, there's something in here. I'm not sure what it is. There's cassis in the opening, and I'm wondering if maybe that's what I'm smelling that I don't particularly care for and honestly you guys it's not bad it's really not this is actually a like for me but there's just something in here yeah when I spray it on my skin I pick up something green in here so I'm guessing it's the cassis okay so I just hit the cassis button and this is what it says the odor profile is leaves and buds of black currants has a characteristic green and ammonia scent reminiscent of cat piss it actually says that. It actually has cat piss in quotations. <laughs> okay, I think that I found why I don't like this fragrance. <laughs> I wasn't really getting cat pee from this fragrance, but I was picking up something in here that is green and a little bit sharp. Anyway, this one is a no for me. Tutu is just not working. I think the cassis note just ruins it for me. All right, this next one's not new. It's been around for a while, but I dismissed this fragrance. I just didn't think I needed it, but so many people have been saying that I do. So many people have been saying this is like the ultimate summertime best fragrance ever. This is by Parfums de Marly. This is Delina La Rose. Now, when this one came out, I was like, I don't need this. I wanted Delina exclusive. I've tried the original Delina. I used to not like it. I started to like it more. Still haven't purchased the OG Delina because I don't love it. It's just a like. Delina exclusive is where it's at for me. And I just thought Delina La Rose was going to be a watered down Delina. So I never paid attention to it. Got a sample of it. And everybody is so right. <laughs> everybody is so right. This is so good. I was like, dang it. People are saying listen don't sleep on Delina La Rose okay don't sleep on it this is good and the performance of this is outstanding by the way I wore this the other day and I could smell this but it's not overpowering like it was wafting off of me and I was getting these delicious like aquatic Delina vibes all day long lasting power is amazing but I was wearing it in the dead heat of South Carolina I was in Charleston walking around outside in the dead heat and just smelling this gorgeous fragrance wafting off of me. It was so good. I just love it so much. This is definitely worth getting for sure. Definitely worth getting your nose on. If you're like me and you dismissed Delina La Rose because you didn't need another Delina, get your nose on it, okay? It's pretty good. <laughs> so this is basically just a fresher, more aquatic take on Delina. It is definitely the summertime Delina for sure, but it doesn't have the same tartness of the original Delina. I can almost, I almost feel like I can smell those watery notes, like watery summertime, yeah. Yeah, just aquatic fresh and aquatic it's so feminine it's so lovely it's just lovely and perfect I am definitely gonna be adding Delina La Rose I don't think I will add the OG Delina I don't think I need it I think 
Delina Exclusive for the fall and winter and Delina La Rose for the spring and summer is what I'm gonna need. All right, up next we have by Soradora. This is Orchidée Rouge. This one has definitely gotten a lot of hype, made the rounds here on YouTube. And I have a sample of it here. They sent this to me. The brand sent me a bunch of samples of their well, all of their fragrances, they sent me all the samples and then they sent, asked me if I wanted a bottle to try out. And I told them I wanted uh, Brosiliande. That one's my favorite. Love Brosiliande. It's on my tray for this month and it's a lime summertime gourmand with, with a sesame dry down, like a sesame base. It's so unique, it's so good, love it. But I don't really hear all that many people talking about that fragrance. I usually hear people talking about Orchidé Rouge. This one is not my favorite. I'm not a big fan of this one. There's something in here, I couldn't figure out what it is because I should like this fragrance. There are so many notes in here that I just absolutely love. There's vanilla, there's almond milk, there's rum. There's sandalwood, there's cinnamon, there's caramel. I mean, I love all those notes. So I couldn't figure out what it was I was smelling in here. And then I looked and I saw that there's a note of Elemi in here. And so I clicked on the picture of Elemi to see what the scent profile was. It is in the group resins and balsams. The odor profile is very fresh, spicy, and can sometimes smell piney. And I have to say, I think that's what I'm picking up in here that I don't like. It does smell fresh, spicy, and almost like pine. Like I'm getting pine needles from this fragrance and I'm not into that. So I think it's the Elemi in here that is completely ruining this fragrance for me. I'm not a fan. So unfortunately, Orchidée Rouge by Sorador is a pass for me. All right, another one that's not new. This one has been around, but I have been so curious about this one. This is by Javoy, and this is Remember Me. I've heard people talk about this fragrance in the past, and I just, I don't know why, but I just wasn't interested. I tried Fire at Will, and I was not impressed with Fire at Will, and I don't know if like the House of Javoy just kind of got pushed out of my view, because of that, which is stupid. Like that's silly. Just because you don't like a perfume doesn't mean you should just dismiss an entire house. But <laughs> I think I subconsciously did that. But anyway, I've heard people talking about Remember Me and they were saying that it smells like a chai tea latte. And that intrigued me. So I decided to get a sample and that's exactly what it smells like to me. A chai tea and cardamom latte. Definitely lots of cardamom in here. As a matter of fact, the first thing I thought of when I tested this for the first time was Starlight by Zerzhov. I had to actually get Starlight out. I just got that fragrance in my collection. I got Starlight out and I actually compared the two fragrances side by side. They are very similar, but they are different as well. Different enough that I do think I can justify owning both. If you're a fan of cardamom, you need to get your nose on Remember Me. So Starlight is a very, more on the cardamom. It's a little bit more spicy in my opinion and it smells more like a cookie to me. Baking cookies in the oven, like gingerbread cookies, but take out the ginger and add some cinnamon and a lot of cardamom and that's Starlight. This has a milk note in it. It's definitely a lot more lactonic. I'm definitely getting that latte vibe from here for sure. It smells like a cardamom chai tea latte. That's what I'm getting. This is so good. Now I will say that when I had Starlight and Remember Me side by side, Starlight was much stronger. I mean, it was like projecting. <laughs> Starlight is very strong on me. This one had good performance, but it wasn't quite the beast that Starlight is on me. Yes, Remember Me by Javoy is definitely a 100% yes for me. I'll probably try to wait until more fall, winter, because I don't see myself wearing it in the spring and summer. It's more of a cozy type of fragrance for me that I could see myself wearing in the fall. So uh, eventually, Remember Me is going to get added into my collection. All right, everybody was talking about the new release by Goldfield and Banks. This is Ingenious Ginger. I'm a huge fan of ginger, and I was so excited for this fragrance. I could not wait when it got to me. I just thought it was the first one I wanted to smell because I want a good performing ginger perfume for the summer. Yeah, I was super excited for this and I have to say it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I don't love this. 
I don't know why. There's definitely ginger in here for sure, but there's something in here that I don't like. It's kind of not, it, it doesn't wow me in any way. And it, yeah, it's just okay. It's okay. There's just something in here I don't like, and I don't know for sure what it is, but I'm wondering if it's the magnolia. Sometimes I don't get along with magnolia. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes magnolia comes across as like waxy, almost kind of plasticky to me. And that's, I'm getting something like that in here. Ingenious Ginger from Goldfield and Banks is not it. It's a no for me. All right, up next we have a perfume. <laughs> This perfume is something, let me tell you. This is by Uniquey Luxury and this is Mangonificent. I've heard lots of people talking about this, but this one, this one, guys, I truly, truly dislike this fragrance. And if you love this fragrance, then you keep loving it, okay? Don't be offended, it's just perfumes. We don't have to like the same thing, but I was shocked at how much I don't like this. Well, I don't know why I was shocked. Okay, here's the thing, I don't like mango. Okay, I can't stand eating mangoes. I don't like the way mangoes taste, but sometimes I like the way they smell. Sometimes I like the way they smell in perfumes. So it's always a gamble whenever I get a mango fragrance anyway. But it's not the mango in here that I don't like. This is a patchouli balm. The patchouli in here is so strong, and I love patchouli, but the patchouli in here is too much. And this is not a clean, warm patchouli. Okay, this is a dirty, earthy, strong, loud, in your face patchouli. It smells like overripe mangoes and lots and lots of dirty, earthy patchouli. <laughs> and, and it is uber strong. I mean, I accidentally got the sample on, just not only did I spray it on paper and sprayed it on the back of my hand, but some of it leaked and got on my fingers and I could just smell it on me. No matter how hard I scrubbed, <laughs> no matter how much I tried, I could still smell this fragrance on me. My husband hates this perfume. He thought it smelled so bad. He wouldn't even sit by me. <laughs> I went downstairs and we were going to watch a movie and he had to sit on the other side of the room because he cannot stand this fragrance. So yeah, I'm not even going to spray it. I was just going to spray it out of habit, but no, no, we're not going, we're not doing that again. So for me, Mangonificent is a no. And I will caution you, if you do not like patchouli, you, you really got to test this fragrance out. Do not blind buy Mangonificent. If you're expecting this tropical, sweet, summertime, fun mango scent <laughs> that's not this isn't it okay this isn't it this is a patchouli bomb in my opinion all right you guys up next i have one that's been really talked about a lot very intriguing for me this is by acro and this is bake and i have to say i'm i thought i loved this at first spray when i first sprayed this this was the lemon cupcake lemon icing perfume of my freaking dreams. I love the opening of this perfume and it is very zesty. Like it has lemon peel in it, not just lemon, lemon peel. So if you're not a fan of lemon or the idea of lemon peel, like zesty, zesty lemon peel doesn't sound appealing to you, that's exactly what's in the opening, but it's very sweet at the same time. So it smells exactly like a delicious lemon cupcake with the most zesty but yet very sweet lemon icing, like a gourmand lemon cupcake. I love it when I first spray it. I absolutely love it, but in about 20 minutes, the lemon goes away on me and I can't smell it anymore. And then I'm just left with this kind of vanilla cupcakey perfume that is doesn't smell bad by any means. It doesn't smell bad, but it's just not, it's not there anymore. It's gone after, the scent isn't gone, but what I love about the scent is gone after like 20 minutes. But first spray of this, I am so sad that this doesn't last. It was just kind of boring after the first 20 minutes. It just really didn't do anything for me. And yeah, I'm so sad. And I also will say that even though it did last about six hours total in scent, it really was close to the skin. I mean, it. I really had to struggle to smell it on me. I could smell it, but it was more like a skin scent. It doesn't have a lot of projection. So unfortunately, Bake is a no for me. And I thought for sure, as soon as I sprayed it, the first time I sprayed it on, I was like, yep, I love this. I'm getting a bottle. I'm so glad I waited. You know, I went, I almost went directly to the website and I thought, no, you got to actually wear this fragrance. Like, give it some time. Just make sure. So glad 
that I didn't order it right away because I was left disappointed in the fragrance, unfortunately. All right, last but not least, we have by the House of Byron. This is the Chronic Rouge Extreme. This sounded right up my alley. Fruits and whipped cream and yeah, all that kind of good stuff. And I have to say this is pretty darn good although the notes don't translate to what I smell. So top notes, you have raspberry, whipped cream, melon, and pear. I'm not sure why or how, but those notes, I don't get raspberry, melon, or pear, I get strawberry. And not just like a little strawberry, like a lot of strawberry. That is the main thing I smell in this perfume is strawberry, but there's no strawberry in here. But I could have sworn there's straw, maybe it's the combination of raspberry, melon, and pear together that smells like strawberry somehow. Let me know in the comment section if you get strawberry from this, but that's exactly what I get. I definitely get this whipped cream vibe from here. It's delicious. That's all I got in the beginning, and I was kind of like, when I first sprayed it, I thought, okay, that's really delicious. I love strawberries and whipped cream, but, well, I like the smell of whipped cream but I don't actually like the taste of whipped cream. I don't eat whipped cream. I know, crazy, right? What am I, a sociopath? I don't actually like whipped cream to eat, but I love to smell it in perfumes. But as this perfume starts to dry down, I do start to pick up on other notes in here. It definitely starts to get warm. There's an amberiness to it. And then the spicy notes come through, but not, not for a little while. I have to let the perfume dry down and then I get those spicy cinnamon notes and that just adds to it. It just makes it even better in my opinion. There's sandalwood, white, musk and patchouli. I don't get any patchouli in this fragrance, but I do get a creamy vibe. So maybe that's the sandalwood and whipped cream together. I really like it a lot. The performance seems to be pretty good. Didn't seem like a beast mode to me, but it definitely was there. I could definitely smell it. I think I will be adding this to my collection. I think again, I'll wait until the fall winter. This seems like more like a fall winter fragrance for me. I don't know that I'd wear it in the summer. So yeah, it's definitely on my list. I think I have added it to my wish list. I do think I'll end up getting a bottle of that at some point. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Those are the fragrances I've been testing, the ones I will be adding to my collection and the ones I will not be. Of course, I wanna hear from you. Please let me know what you think of these fragrances in the comment section. I absolutely love talking to you guys. I might not get a chance to respond to everybody all the time, but I do always read everyone's comments and I do appreciate you for sure. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!